Welcome to the fourth video of the Advanced Roblox Studio series. On this series, I teach about advanced things on Roblox Studio. In this video, I'm going to be teaching about mouse on Roblox Studio. Before I get started, I want to mention that if you're completely new to this channel, I recommend you go check out my beginner's playlist so that you can get all caught up so that this video will make much more sense to you. The beginner's playlist will be in my description in this video. Now that I've got that out of the way, we can get started. So right here, I have a couple of things set up that I want to just show so that you guys can get it set up on your Roblox Studio 2. So right here, the, I have a local script. You can, don't have to put it in exactly starter pack if you don't want to. You can put it in GUI or a uh, starter player or stuff like that, but I just chose starter pack. So you can put in starter pack if you want. So you just need a local script and you can have an object browser if you'd like. And of course you need your game. So in the local script, I'm going to be teaching a couple of things about the mouse. I don't really mean like literally teaching about how the mouse moves or something like that, but I'm going to be showing about how you can use it to check if something's happening with your mouse. It's like there's a couple events inside of mouse, so I want to show those so that you can have a better understanding of how you can use mouse because this will be an important part of a big project that's coming up soon. So the first thing I want you to do is type local player is equal to game dot players dot local player. What this is here is just a variable that is trying to get the player itself, like a local player. So that since this is a local script, you can watch my last video about that, about local scripts. It is about getting the player, technically. Like sort of getting the player so that I can use uh, the player so that I can grab the mouse, which I'll be showing in just a second. Might have sounded a little bit confusing, but I hope you understand. Local is the next thing. We're going to type mouse is equal to, and then we're going to do player, the variable we just created, and then we're going to do colon and do get mouse. Sort of like we're getting the mouse. So now we have our mouse and our player. So those are the two variables we're going to be making in this video. So you don't need to worry about any more variables. So here, what we're going to do is mouse dot. And the first thing I want to show is mouse button one down. Before I type it in, I want to go in here to object browser. Inside of mouse, if, I recommend you go get your object browser by going to view and clicking object browser over here. So on mouse, if I scroll down, you can see all of the properties or functions or events that are inside of the mouse. So the first event that I want to show is mouse button one down. Right here, if we click on it, it's a member of mouse. The summary is fired when the first button, usually the left, but could be another, on the mouse is pressed. So like when I press down my mouse like this, I don't know if you could hear that, but when I push it down like that, then that's when the event would be fired. So I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to type in button, then one down. Make sure that the words are capital and that's spelled right. Then we want to do connect. Make sure that the connect is capitalized. Oops. Connect. Then brackets, function, end. And here now we can give an output. I'm not going to do something too complicated yet. So just for simp simplicity, we're going to do print brackets, let's say mouse is down. So if we click play, here we are, and if I hold down by pushing down on my left mouse button, then you can see 
oops, accidentally did that, sorry. Now you can see down here, mouse is down. And I press my mouse two times, or the, now three. So then it did times three instead of repeatedly uh, making it repeatedly print like a row here saying mouse down, mouse down, which is kind of useful so that you don't have your print like completely filled with a bunch of these. But if you have something like if a mouse is up, which I'm going to be showing in just a second, then it would sort of left and right and print like that. But if it's just one same thing repeating a billion times, then you know it's staying at that repeating inside of the same print statement. If I scroll up, there's nothing. It's just changing that number, like times 17. So if we get out, now that we've figured out how to do mouse button one down, we can do mouse button one up by simply just deleting down. And make sure that the up is capital at the beginning. Then stood down, we're typing up. Play. Here we are. If we hold down, nothing happens because we didn't create a completely new function. Instead, we just create, just edited the same one. So if I let go, then now we see the print statement. Mouse is up. So down doesn't do anything because we didn't create a new function. It's just the same one, so it's only detecting when it goes up. You could make it to detect both by creating a separate function. But I'm just going to be showing these one by one, and so that the print state, the output doesn't get completely jumped up with a bunch of these print statements. The next thing I want to show is deleting these, and it's down here. I have this list right here in case I might like my brain may space out or something. So I just created this list. The next thing is idle. Make sure it's capital I, D L E, and then. So what idle means is like if your mouse is not moving, this could be useful for like AFK games. Well, not AFK games, but like for it to check if you're AFK. For more cooler functions like checking if AFK and maybe mini games, so then you don't go into the game when you're AFK, like that. So that's what idle could be used for, but it could be used for many other different reasons so you can feel free to use it in any way you want okay here we are you may be noticing that down here it says mouse is idle and it's just increasing very quickly and that's because since it's like that it's not moving because my hand is not on the mouse right now so right now it's just increasing like by a bunch of numbers by the second like soon enough it will like increase to a thousand maybe but you know how it goes it just continues growing and growing until I move it then it should stop slowly but in, it, it checks by every single millisecond is idle so like even if I'm moving it may lag or something maybe so then it would sort of detect that as idle and then it will put it onto the number I'm gonna clear this since that's so many so that's idle. Now we're going to check the opposite of that, and that's move. So we're going to do capital M. Remember that it's spelled right and has a capital letter, or else, because Lua is very case sensitive, so you have to make sure that you're spelling it right. Right? Sorry. Yeah. So when we type move, we can type the mouse is moving. And we can click play. Okay, here we are, and it says the mouse is moving, and since I had to move it a bit, then it also counted that by like every millisecond it increases, as you can see, it's sort of like, maybe reminds you like a timer or a stopwatch, you know how the milliseconds go like super fast, that's how, sort of how fast it's detecting it right now, so when I move it, it just detects it at that speed, the faster I move it, the more it detects it. So then it's just increasing incredibly fast, to, like I'm just randomly moving my mouse right now. But when I move it, then it just increases. But if I'm not moving it, when it's idle, then it just sits there at the same number. You may notice that when I'm doing this, the 
since it's increasing so fast, just as fast as a while loop would. And if you remember, if you've watched my while video, I recommend you go watch it, as well as my other ones if you're completely new, uh, that the while loop would crash if you don't add a wait statement. And in here, it's detecting it just as fast while moving it around, but it's not crashing at all. It's completely fine. And that's because of how the different setup is. Because since it's a while loop, it just continues running on its own, and this one's detecting it constantly. Well, it just checks it and then does it. Similar to a while loop, but the difference between it causes it to not crash, like how a while loop would, so then you don't need to add a wait statement in between it, unless you wanted to make something wait. So yeah, I just wanted to say that. But now we know mouse is moving, idle, button one down, button one up. And then I have three more I want to show, which is X, Y, and target. Let's start with X and Y. So up here, we don't really need to change this. We can keep it at move. So where we're going to add actually add the X and Y is by deleting this and doing mouse. So it's going to print out mouse.x or the X coordinate. So the mouse X coordinate. So it's going to check that. And if, well, it's going to check if it's moving. Then it's going to print out the X coordinate at that area while the event is fired. So if we wait a second, load in, if I move my mouse around, you can see since the number is constantly changing because the x-coordinate isn't the same every time when I move it, then you can see it's sort of just sort of rolling down at random numbers instead of just doing times 2 or times something like that. If I move it at the y, it will still detect it moving. So you could see like times two, times three, or things like that because I'm moving it up and down. So it can sort of say, no, not stay, stay in the same area. So then it could see times two or times three. But if I move it left and right, then it'll most likely just stay like that with different numbers. So yeah, that's uh, mouse X. Mouse Y is sort of the same thing, but instead it detects it when it's moving up and down instead of left and right. So we could do mouse X, and we could also print mouse X and mouse Y at the same time. If you watched my other videos, then I'm not exactly sure of which video it was, but in that video, I shown of how you can connect uh, several pieces of text or strings together. So we're, what we're going to do is do double dots. Then we're going to do quotation marks and do a dot so that it can do the X coordinate dot y coordinate, All right, and then we do another two dots, and then we type mouse dot y. So here when we click play, here I am. And here, if I move my mouse around, you can see in the output that it's showing the x coordinate dot and then the y coordinate. And it's constantly changing, of course, because I'm constantly moving my mouse. So when I get out, then that's almost everything. I just want to do one more thing, which is target. Target is used to check uh, where your mouse is hovering over so it can detect if your mouse is hovering over uh, a part, base plate, basically anything except for the sky. If it points at the sky, since there's no object there and the sky is just the sky, you know, then it's going to type nil. Nil is like nothing. So if we go here, we can delete all that by clicking the trash can we can type into the print mouse. Sort of like how we did mouse.x, we're going to do mouse.target. Make sure that's a capital T, and you type it right, target. So when you have mouse.target in, you can go to play. 
So when I'm in the game, I move my mouse a bit, and you can see in the output that it says base plate. So when I have it over base plate, you can see it just constantly generating base plate. Not sorry, I said that wrong. Base plate constantly. And if I go over on this part, it's named target in the explorer, so then it prints out target. But if I go into the sky, then it just types nil. And it constantly says nil as long as it's in the sky and moving. But if it's on the ground or the part, then it just generates target. And that's because in the sky, in the big blue sky, there is no actual object in the sky, it's just the sky itself. You know, because you can't actually touch anything in the sky by reaching your hand out. So then up here it just says nil because there's nothing for it to detect. So it replaces uh, that with the word nil because there's nothing up there for it to detect. So yeah, that's why it does that. So, that is about it for today. But before I go, I want to say um, one thing. You may have noticed that there's a couple of things in here that you want to learn, like maybe hit or icon. I don't really have the time to do it. But in my next video, I'm going to be teaching about the Roblox Wiki and Dev Forms so that you have the ability to search up a couple of things that I may not be able to show or I might not have time to show in my videos so that you can learn from the Wiki or depth form or even from other YouTubers if you'd like to. So because of the time that I don't really have to completely go over like every single thing that is in mouse, you could go to the Roblox Wiki and check it out, which I'll be making a video about of how to get there and stuff in my next one. So I hope you have an amazing day. I'll see you tomorrow in my next video to teach you about the Roblox Wiki. Bye.